Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We sit them down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and buy the goods off you for cash on the spot today. Try £40. No, thank you. 200 your eyebrows went up. Did they? <laughs> you stopped? Oh, because I stopped. <laughs> There's an alternative. You can place those same goods into an auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Today the show comes to you from Penrith in Cumbria. There's a good crowd of people here. They've brought along their goods. They're keen to do business. They want to walk away with the real deal. It's all go in the dealer's den, and first up, Ian's got a table full of sparkle to start his day. Tiaras, God's best friend. I love this one. I thought you I think it. I'm going to wear it. It goes with my brooch. What do you think? <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I think it's lovely. Suits you, sir. <laughs> oh, Lord. What am I going to do with this lot? One for each day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got a very funny week. <laughs> well, There's too many days in your on, week. <laughs> two on a Sunday. <laughs> two on Sunday. Hmm. Where did you get them? How did you get them? I used to own a bridal shop, which ah. I closed quite a while ago. So I kept my silver tiaras, because they're all hallmarked solid silver, mm -hmm. and just put them away in the attic and... Thought did you design any today. No, I didn't. I did actually use to make tiaras and I made Celtic and um, big crowns and I used I could to do sell them. I, big, oh, I've got one that you'd like. It's got big dragonflies on and just Where your kind it? of thing. I didn't bring it today. Next <laughs> I time. Just, maybe next time. Yeah, definitely. If I buy these, you can give it as an extra. Oh, yeah, I'll send you a picture. <laughs> okay. That'll do to start. Hi. Well, they're all very pretty, I must say. Have you any idea what they're worth? Well, there's nearly 300 grams. I think it's about 280-something grams of silver. So I just think that you would probably shift them in your very exclusive boutique you, you own. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we're looking for here is a princess or an old queen that wants to be all right. I'm the Duchess. And I think we might have just found the right buyer here. Mm. I think so. <laughs> Oh, this show gets worse. <laughs> oh, it does, <laughs> Let's put it this does. There. OK, because I can pile nice. it up here. Yeah, I'll pile it up. I love did that. Did you hear what I just yes, said? Yes, I did. Oh, I'm mm. liking the sound of that. You like the sound of that? I do. I start with 50. 100. 150. She's looking at me. 150. 60, 70, 170. We're almost up to scrap value. Almost. Almost. Well, here comes trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know he wants them, don't you? Get the 200 pounds down and get them home. You know you want them in. So will I get them for 200? Put it down and, and we'll, we'll... Well, I wouldn't go more than 200. Like... I'm taking right. this away. Yes, take that. I don't like that colour. You don't like that colour? No. Nor do I. No. So now we have 200 on the table. I've taken the 20 away and made it 200. What do you think? Well, I'm going out for a meal tonight with my husband. So I think that would maybe just about cover it. Nowadays, I can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> the places I need, yes, just about. Yeah. Well, have a great meal I with your husband. Thank you very much Give a much big indeed. hug and kiss from me. Oh, I thank will. Thank you very Not much. Not too big a hug. <laughs> Over on Karen's table is an aspiring young dealer ready to set her wits against an expert. How old are you? I'm 11. 11? Wow. And what have we got here? Um, it's a woman with a lamb. Yeah. Do you know what factory it is? Do you know who yeah, made it? Yeah, um, Ladro. Ladro, clever girl. Oh, budding dealer, eh? Would you like to get into the trade? Yeah? Yeah. So, is this yours or is it Mum's? Um, well, it's been... Passed down to my mum, and my mum's just give it, given it to me. Yeah, so it's yours, so I've got to deal with you, have I? Ooh, are you a bit of a roughy taffy to deal with? Yep. Mm, okay. So, Ladro, it's quite a modern little factory, and they still produce it. It's actually Spanish, I don't know if you realise. 
very recently our Japanese friends took a total shine to Ladro. We all started dealing in it like mad because the prices were shooting up, but now they've settled right back down to what they should be again. But it's still lovely stuff. So this could be a lot of money. This could be a lot of treats, couldn't it? Yeah. Um, the money I'll put towards uh, my French trip yeah? in La Rochelle. Oh, no pressure on me then. I've got a stump up, have I? Oh, yeah. OK, right. Let's put some money down and see where we go. 20. 30 pounds, Kirsty. Come on, give me a break. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of treats. That's a lot of French visit. Oh, don't look now. There's somebody coming round you. Oh. <laughs> 30 pounds on the table. Mm. How impressed are you with that, Kirsty? Mm. Reasonably impressed. Yeah. Right. We'd like to think we would try and get a little bit more money if it's possible. It's very expensive in France. We've got to change that into the euros. Mm. And then going to, where is it you're going to? Um, La Rochelle. La Rochelle? Blimey. Mm, Food's very expensive. So um, obviously you need as much money as you can to put into euros. Try and get a little bit more. At the moment, a reasonable offer. We'd like to think that perhaps £40 would be about its value. Oh, what about, Kirsty? what about if I put another five down? That's £35. Quick, accept it. Kirsty, say, don't mess me about. I'm looking for 40. <laughs> 40, please. 40? OK. Look, I want you to have a lovely time. You've got a few mates going with you, have you? Yeah. Put another fiver down, a few extra treats for them as well? Yeah. OK, well done. So we've got a deal. Deal. Well done. Well done, Kirsty, and uh, good luck in your future career. Thank you. Budding dealer. Well, Kirsty's happy and she certainly gave Karen a run for her money. So we head back across the den, where Jo's got some treasure from foreign travels on her table. Can you tell me a little bit about this? This is a, a set of jewellery which I believe my aunt had custom made for her while she was working in Persia. And um, she ultimately gave it to my mother and I inherited it from her. I believe that it's made from coal and silver. And, and that's yeah. all I know. It's made from um, haematite, iron oxide. It's not coal. It's a semi-mineral. It's uh, sort of very, very, very fine wire work, isn't it? It is. There's an awful lot of work gone into mm. it. Um, how much is it worth? How much is it worth? I have no blooming idea. Give it a whirl, anyways, and see uh, see what happens. I really am being honest, but I have no idea. Try forty pounds. No, thank you. <laughs> That's okay. Swap it for a fifty. Does that help? Probably not. Doesn't seem a lot of money. I wouldn't disagree with that. Well, it's not a lot of money, is it? And I, I think, in some ways, you must be very disappointed because there looks to be a lot of jewellery yes. there for fifty pounds. Yes. I think it's worth a gamble at the auction. But that's what I think. It's up to you, unless you can get any more money off Joe. Now, that's not easy. <laughs> mm. Well, it's, as they say, the ball's in your court. Right, and that's your final offer. Yeah. I think I'll go to auction. You're going to go to auction? Yes, well, yes. well done. And I hope you have a good time and I hope Thank you, you very do much. well with it. Thank you. Deserves it. Thank Just you. Deserve very much. it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fifty pounds was bang on estimate. So has Patricia made the right choice going to auction? Let's find out as it goes under the hammer with David Brooks. It's here in the sale room with a fifty to eighty pound estimation. The reserve is £50, the amount you turned down. And the question is, is there someone here in the sale room that's going to like this decorative hematite um, stone which is set within this jewellery? We're about to find out. It's coming up now. We come now to lot 190A, which is the uh, jewellery set. 
Everything you need for that evening out. Start me 30. 30 pounds somewhere. Nice jewelry set, thank you, sir. 30 pounds. 30 pounds. Nice 35, 38, 40, 42, 45. Commission's now at 45 in the room. Room bid at 45 pounds. 45, we'll take 48 if that helps. 45, any advance? 45 pounds, and selling now at 45 pounds. The gavel has just gone down at £45. It hasn't sold. Mm -hmm. Actually did sell. We'll sort the commission out so the lady doesn't come out with any less. The auctioneer is very sporting. He's given me uh, the signal, no commission, and so you're taking home £45. First of all, are you satisfied with that? Yes. OK. But on the day, remember back, Joe, our dealer, offered £50 in cash on the dealer's day so the real deal, Joe, goes to you, love. Also coming up, it looks like Teddy could do with a hug. Just sort of sat on a cupboard, gathering dust, unfortunately. All alone. Yes, Lonely yes, and unloved. yes. So will Teddy find a new best friend? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Penrith in Cumbria. Now over to Henry's table to see if he's up for the job of rehoming Teddy. Well, what a charming little bear we have here. He is, yes. What's the history of him? Um, he was mine from a baby, um, but he was part of my mum's family and he was passed on to me. Um, played with probably quite a lot, but over the last years as I've got older, just sort of sat on a cupboard gathering dust, unfortunately. All alone? But, yes, Lonely yes. Lonely and unloved? Yes. Not well, not loved, but just maybe forgotten about a little right. bit. Well, let's have a look at him. Um, I mean, first of all, we can tell from his style that he's 1950s. Right. OK, um, he's straw stuffed, and I would say, looking at him, that he's probably made by a firm called Merrythorn. Right. OK, um, so that does make him English. Condition with bears, some people like them a bit battered and played and loved. Right, with. yes. Yeah. Other people like to see them in mint condition. He's somewhere in between the two. Right. OK? So mm -hmm. what we can do is we can make you an offer and see what we think. Right, yes, okay. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So what we'll do, we'll get some money out for you, and we'll start with 20, 30, 5. How does that seem? I would want more for him than that. I do think he's been loved for a lot of years. I did take him somewhere else and they did say, well, they were looking at sort of 100 to 150, they said, right. they valued him at. Right. We'll see what we can do. Right. How about another 20 and 30? That brings us up to 65. Right. Just before you make a decision on Teddy, where he's going to live, right. how <laughs> long has Teddy lived with you? Well, I'm 42, so he's been with me since I was a baby and then obviously with my mum's family before that. OK. Well, I'm going to say, if you're going to part with him, £65 sounds a fair offer. Thank you. Well, I don't think, Michelle, to be honest, that I would want to go any more right, yeah, than 65 yeah. on him. Right. So the decision is yours. I think I'm quite... Yeah, I'd, I'd sort of thought of a price in 65. I'm, I'm quite happy with that, I think. I'll let him go. Marvellous. Well, I'll find him a very good home. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Pleasure. Remember, we saw Kirsty earlier in the show. Good luck in your future career. Thank you. Budding dealer. Well, Karen, as they say, it takes one to know one. Tell them at home, Karen. Come on, how did you start? Well, I've always, always loved collecting and dealing right from an early age. I mean, I was in the local paper when I was 10 years old because I had a, a PDSA stand and I was running a stall and, and I was probably the only kid in this great big hall that was running a stall. Um, so I think it has to be a little bit in your blood anyway. But you're very knowledgeable in a very wide mm. range of merchandise, mm. so that's because you've handled a lot of goods. Mm. Well, when I first got married um, and started going to auctions, I realised that I could kit my house out for next to nothing if I was just prepared to go and buy pieces of furniture, take them home, strip them down, literally stripping them down. I'm sure you must have done Absolutely. that as well. 
and then waxing them up, French yeah. polish and all, waxing and, and getting yeah. the glass repaired. Um, and then you could kit your house out for next to nothing. How did you start to get a capital together? Because people are saying, well, that sounds fine, Karen can do that, but how do I start out? You have a little tiny capital and you, you build it gradually, because as you're building gradually, you're learning by your mistakes, and there's no better way no. to learn than to do a bit of money on something. You do not do that again. Sit in an auction for a day yeah. and see what, what, what the trends are, what's fetching money, what's not yeah. fetching money, what all the dealers are clamouring to buy, and get a feel for it. Okay. Well, you've heard what Karen has had to say. She loves it, she lives it, she works it, she makes a very good living at it. You've got to really want to do this. What time do you get up in the morning, Karen? Three o'clock. Right. If you stay in bed, you're no good at this job. The early bird catches the worm. Get out there, have a go, and you can make it. See you on the show in a few years' time. Back on Ian's table are a pair to make you sit up and beg. But can Ian resist their puppy dog eyes? The Duke and our auctioneer David Brooks are waiting to find out. Two dog paintings. Yes. Anything you know about them? Uh, not, not a great deal, really. Yeah, my mother-in-law sent us down with them, so... So you're just the courier for her? Yeah. They're both signed, uh, Colin Graham. I don't know the artist at all, I'll be very honest with you. They look pretty good, you know, the work looks pretty good. Um, they, I would say around the late part of the 19th century. They're not my scene at all. Right. <laughs> I don't like the frames, you know, I think they could have been in better frames. Do you like the frames? I like the frames, yeah. Yes, I like the paintings. You like the paintings? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you know where she got them? Uh, her husband bought them a long time ago, well, 30 years ago, something he like that. He bought them 30 years ago? Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. And, but he was like a bit of a huntsman and that kind of thing, so, you know, with the dogs. Uh... Oh, OK, so that's why he went for dogs. Yeah. It's a pity, you know, they both need cleaning, a lot of cleaning. And I imagine when they're clean, they will come up and look quite fabulous, even though they're not my thing. Now, David, a pair of dog pictures. Yep. I think very nicely executed. We've looked at the artist, we know something about him, he's Victorian, yeah. mid-19th century up to the early part of the 20th century. Yeah, they're nicely done, aren't they? And it's the sort of thing that I'm sure would look lovely hanging on a cottage wall. Absolutely. Where are you going to go with these? I think they could be anywhere from sort of five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds, that sort of region. I think in present condition, that sounds about right. Our independent valuers have put somewhere around six to eight hundred pounds on them. And we are a nation of dog lovers, so I can see a lot of potential in them. The question is, is he a dog lover? Let's see what he puts on the table. What should I pay for them? Bearing in mind they do need a bit of work. Right. Uh, Fifty. 100, 150. So slowly the 50 pound notes are being peeled off. 150, 200. That's just about bought the dog food. That's about bought the dog food. I think you're right, David. Your eyebrows went up. Really? <laughs> you stopped? <laughs> because I stopped. <laughs> 200, 250, 300. Do you have any idea what you're looking for? Oh, well, we have had uh, okay. <laughs> Well, now we will definitely... I've come in here now, and my <laughs> eyebrows are raising up quite a lot as well. Um, six to eight hundred pounds seems to be the going price uh, for pictures of this size. So I'm going to say you've got to be somewhere, the six to eight hundred pounds, looking towards perhaps at least the middle of that estimate. Otherwise, it's off to auction, we will go, and whoop, whoop, believe you me, we're going to crack it there. Well, I have 300 on the table at the moment. Yes. I was going up to 400, OK? So I'd put it on the table, OK? So it's 400 on the table. I'm not going to pay a penny more than that, OK? So you have to decide whether you want to gamble it at auction or not. Uh, I'd like to go to the auction. You'd like to go to auction? Have you been to auction before? I haven't been to an auction before. Never been to an auction? A car auction. A car auction? Yeah. Well, this is a fine arts auction, darling. <laughs> OK. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you. 220, 
Christmas, high hopes as Adrian's mother-in-law Angela takes the dog paintings to auction. But could we be barking up the wrong tree? Now, on the dealer's day, your son-in-law sat down with Ian Towning and he said, they're not my kind of thing. The estimation here is six to eight hundred pounds. I think that's realistic, and the reserve is 550. Well, I feel confident they should sell, but I will say this to you, if they don't sell, you have nothing to worry about because these are commercial goods, they are fresh to the market. I think they're great. They're coming up now. What do you think? Are they going to sell? Are you confident? Uh, yes. <laughs> OK. You're saying, mm, yes, yes, maybe. I'm saying, yes. I think they should do it. Let's see what they bring under the gavel. We come now to lot 55A, which is a pair of oil paintings, Colin Green, nice portrait studies of dogs. Start with £400 then, please. £400, pair of oil paintings, Colin Green. They're cheap, that. 400. They're calling for 400 Any interest of £400. No interest at all? No. The gavel went down. No sale. They were asking for £400 and they couldn't get a bidder. Now, what's your reaction? Oh, I'm not bothered. Disappointed? No, 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 not at all. Well, I'm going to say this to you, my love. Don't be disappointed. On the day, the real deal was no doubt with Ian Towney. He didn't really care for them and he offered £400. So that is today's real deal. But I'm saying to you, they are a great pair of pictures. I think sometime in the future they'll go into another sale room and I think they will do well. They're a quality pair. But on the day, the real deal went to you, Ian, at £400. Coming up. I daren't tell you what's written in that book because it's before the watershed, but I've never seen anything like it. Find out why David's got all hot under the collar after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Today we're in Penrith in Cumbria. The dealer's den is still in full swing and it's over to Karen's table for the next deal. A couple of interesting pairs of glasses we've got here. Now, I'll let you tell me the story and then we'll get on with uh, what I think of them. Well, I'm a builder by trade and when we went into a lot of these houses, surprising what people left. Oh, I bet. Maybe in tins, cupboards or things like that. And these were in a tin in one of the cupboards. You must have thought they were quite interesting to yes. bother to keep them for that time. Yes, the green ones are actually warm when I've been driving with the sunshine. These ones? Yeah, these these ones. Sl slight tint. Go on then, Gordon. Let's have a look. Let them down a bit. There yeah, there. brilliant. Isn't they look it? amazing. They yeah, are, they're lovely. They're Fun. nice colour, the green. Yeah, like I, can, I can see what you're on about. It's like so a green tint, isn't it? look at the lights it? and they're not dazzling. Can you imagine the cars? the first cars that were out and about then, and you can just imagine them driving along with these glasses on, can't you? Yeah. I mean, these are good originals. These are sort of 1920s, but I've actually seen new ones of these recently. New ones. So they've actually done the whole rounds, and they're now yeah. the height of fashion. I don't oh, think you realise that, No, I, I had the foggiest idea. Yeah, people love these. They're really getting into them. <laughs> right, have you got an idea of what you'd like for? Fair idea. Have but, you? Uh, just a fair I've idea. I've got more than I have then, because I haven't got a clue mm. what I'm going to put down. Right, let's have a little think. 20, 40, 60, 80 quid gone. Is that for the lenses? That's for the two pairs. Come on, don't get <laughs> cheeky on me now. <laughs> well, you'd rather let it out the bag when you said do it very collectible now, and I think uh, I have an idea that you can get more than that. So if I put another 20, are we going to have a deal? Because I'm not going to put it in this, I know. OK. We'll have a deal? Yes. Yeah? Oh, yes. brilliant. I love them. Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Karen's happy and it's over to our next dealer. Hello, Henry uh, Nichols. Cashing in the family jewels may make good sense financially, but is Henry prepared to stump up the cash? Well, I see you bought a beautiful little ring in. Uh, what can you tell me about it? Um, it was given to my mother and my mother passed it on to me many, many years ago. OK. And um, I always understood it was Victoria. OK, well, shall we have a look? 
Well, what we've got here, we've got little old cut round brilliant diamonds and the central stone is a turquoise. And if we have a look at the hallmark that's on the shank here, we can tell that it's 14 karat gold, which means it's continental. Now, what gives you the impression that it is actually Victorian? It was just I understood that from my uh, mother, because the ladies that she got this from, they were in the 90s. OK. Well, it has got age to it, but it's not quite as old as you think it is. Right. Um, what we're looking at here is a ring that is 20th century. Um, right. It's mid-20th century. Um, and we can tell that by the style of the setting, OK? Now, it's a sweet, sweet little ring, OK? We've got a total carat weight there, I would say, of diamonds that is about half a carat, maybe just over. Yes. Jewellery at the moment is very, very popular, but it has to be a certain style of jewellery, OK? Now, I like that as a ring, but perhaps not everybody else would. So I think perhaps what would be a good idea to do with it would be to replace the turquoise and perhaps put a piece of amethyst in there which would really lift it and make it a lot more popular. So, obviously you brought it in to sell. Is there any particular reason why you want to sell it? Yes, I want the money basically for my grandchildren. Okay. I want to get ices for them. And um, they are not into gold. They prefer silver. OK, well, let's see what we can do. I can make you an offer and we'll take it from there. OK. 20, 40. 60, 80, 100, 20, 140, 160. How does that sound? Can you manage a little more? I think we have to be careful because obviously it does need a jolly good clean and a polish. And the diamonds that we've got in there aren't top end diamonds. Okay. Right. But we'll go. 20, 30, 190. How does that seem? Could you possibly give me another 10? I've just come in here at a very important time because, Jeanette, I've heard you ask our dealer, Henry, can I have another £10? I can tell you that our independent valuers and the auctioneer, they're both 150 to 200. And at £200 that you've asked for, if Henry is prepared to put that down, I'm going to say... I would sanction that. That's a good offer, and it's worth taking. OK, Jeanette. I will agree to your request of an extra £10, so we'll take that one away. We'll put down a £20 note. And have we got a deal? Certainly. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed, Jeanette. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, here's a curious piece of medical history. It's a device for treating all sorts of ailments with electric shocks. But will Joe have a shocking time trying to work out its value? You've brought in this little piece of our social history. I have, yes. How do you come to own it? I bought a house off my auntie and uncle to renovate, and there was various things that were left in the bedroom, and this was one of them that was upstairs. <laughs> It was in one of the bedrooms, so that's how I came to own it. And have you tried it out in I anger? I haven't tried it out at all, no. <laughs> right. Um, well, it's new to me. It's called a Vitalator. It's got this lovely period paperwork, and it's even got its original invoice, which is dated the 23rd of September, 1937. And this thing cost... A fortune, didn't it? It cost about six pounds. Six pounds must have been a lot of money in 1937. Certainly quite a bit, yeah. yeah. You obviously plug it in, put your appliance on, which can do all sorts of things. This is a saturator. I'm no wiser, but... Neither am I. <laughs> right, OK. We've got a special ele electrode for all curved parts of the body. <laughs> And this one, whatever it was, is bust. How much do you want for this fine piece of our history? That's for you to decide, isn't it? Do you? OK. A tenner. That's my um, offer. Ten pounds, you don't have bulled all the money. It's not a lot of money, ten quid, is it? I mean, I'm surprised, Joe, it hasn't tickled your fancy, this, because it is an instrument, a medical instrument. I don't tell you what's written in that book, because it's... 
before the watershed, but I've never seen anything like it. And there are people that collect <laughs> medical items. 20 to 30 pounds is what the independent valuers say. And I think at sale, it could do a little bit better than 20 quid. So you've listened to what David said. I take it that you're going to go to auction with it. I am. Well, good luck. Thanks for bringing it in. Thank you. Thank you. It's been <laughs> fun. <laughs> So the Vitalator goes to auction, where David does some probing of his own. Did you ever try it? I didn't. Uh, you didn't plug it didn't in and uh, uh, do any of that? <laughs> I didn't. Uh. Find out if there are any more shocks after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Before the break, we saw the medical curio the Vitalator sent off to auction. I take it that you're going to go to auction with it? I am. Well, good luck. One, five, one. Now, let's see if it can electrify the auction room. Now, Carl, on the day you brought in a Vitalator, I think it gave off electric shocks, didn't it? Something like so that. So I was led to believe, yeah. Did you ever try it? I didn't, no. You didn't plug it didn't in and do, uh, do any of that? No, I didn't. Uh. <laughs> it's here in the sale with a £20 reserve. The question is, can we persuade somebody to part with 20 quids worth of the hard-earned cash for a Vitalator. We come now to lot 95A, which is the uh, medical appliance. You could have hours of uh, innocent pleasure with that. Start with 20 then, please. Surely 20 pounds, it's a fun lot. 20 pounds anywhere? Thank you, sir. 20 bid right behind you. It's behind well, there's a bidder. There's a bidder in the room, 20 yeah. pounds. Yes, 25. 28. 28 you see, you there. never know. 28 pounds. Right 28 and selling at 28 pounds. <laughs> okay, 28 pounds. Take off a bit of commission. That leaves you 25 pounds. What's ooh, your reaction ooh, to that? <laughs> oh, it's better than 10, isn't it? It's better than 10. And I think at the end of the day, Carl, uh, we've had a bit of fun. You brought it along to the show. Nobody knew what it was. We now know it's a, a medical appliance. I think 25 quid is probably its money. So, on the day, are you satisfied? I am, yeah. Any idea what you're going to splash out with this 25 quid on? Well, I haven't decided yet. Yeah. Perhaps a few pints down at the local? It could well be, yeah. OK, on the day, the real deal was here in the sale. Somebody got themselves electrified. They bought the Vitalator for 28 quid. Take home 25 quid. That was the real deal. So it's back to the dealer's den in time for our last deal. And this time, fate might be playing a role in proceedings. What a pretty little ring. Thank you. Sapphire and diamonds. Very nice. Also in, in a blue box to go That's with the right. sapphire. Yeah. It's a very lovely yeah, idea. Yeah, it shows it off nicely, doesn't it? Does it does indeed. Yes, I like it very much. And the address, Kings Road, Brighton. Yes. Well, I'm sure this ring has been brought especially for me. Because Absolutely. I'm on the corner of Kings Road and oh, Sydney really? Street. Oh, really? So I yeah. do. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful location. And how did you get the ring? Well, it was passed to my mother by her aunt. Um, I've had it about 11 years and I've got two daughters and I thought, you know, rather than one of them get it, maybe I should sell it and then... Well, get another one, come and buy well, one from me and then give them one another... each. <laughs> and I can I make a profit. I never thought of that. No. <laughs> it was very pretty. What I like about it is the sapphires are not black. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the times, these pretty little rings, they put very cheap, dark, dark, sapphires into mm -hmm. them and they look like coal or onyx mm. which is so sad when I mean, they could have easily at this time you know this period mm -hmm. lake victorian you know period put in pretty stones and that's what they've done they've used two light blue sapphires surrounded by mine cut diamonds very pretty i like it you can gather i yeah. like it <laughs> and going to the hallmark it looks like it's 18 carat and it is marked 18 CT, OK? Mm -hmm. And next to that, they've got the maker's mark. But they haven't got a complete hallmark with the date letter, where it was made, etc. Otherwise, we could have dated it to the day, to the year. All right. You know, but yeah. unfortunately, it isn't there. Mm. So, but its style, mm -hmm. everything tells you that it's definitely correct, mm -hmm. you know, late Victorian. <laughs> so, very good condition. Sapphires are 
perfect color that I like. Diamonds are perfect, wonderful. And it's very simple. Mm. Okay. Now she's getting excited. <laughs> it's all positive work. Yeah. Everything is positive it's about it. It's very positive, yeah. Very positive. So, shall we start with 50? 100, 150, uh, 200. Are we getting warmer? Well, just keep going. Keep going. Keep going, <laughs> yeah. Why stop 200. now? <laughs> 250. 250. Oh dear. <laughs> Did you hear that? Oh dear. Yes. <laughs> now, this is what he normally says. Normally, he says, You want more? <laughs> you want more? Bet your life we do want more. <laughs> OK. Let me tell you what the independent valuers say. They say 2 to 250, 250 to 300. So we're right in the middle there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say try and get that extra 50 quid. <laughs> Otherwise, you might find other people in the sale room that think rather like Ian. It's in lovely original condition and I'll pay a little bit more. So I'm going to say to you, <laughs> okay. if you can persuade him to give you another 50 quid, maybe that's stopping you from going to auction. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I, I like the ring very much. Okay. okay. So you have at the, at the moment 250 on the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm giving you another 50. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we have 300 on the table, yeah. and I think that's a very, very good offer. We have a deal. Wonderful. Shall we shake? Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you for very bringing much. it along. Thank you. Well, we've had a fine display of dealing from young and old today. How did our dealers get on with their purchases? I, I think I'm going to wear it. It goes with my brooch. What do you think? I think it's lovely. Suits you, sir. <laughs> it may look good on him, but Ian hasn't found any suitable buyers for the tiaras yet. Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Karen bought both pairs of glasses for £100 and has sold one pair for £60, so she's on her way to making a profit. And the Ladro figure made her a £10 profit, proving she's still one step ahead of the youngsters. Budding dealer. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Indeed. Henry Thank followed you. his plan and replaced the turquoise with an amethyst and has sold it for £320. All alone. Yes. Lonely yes, and unloved. Yes. Teddy had been left on the wardrobe for years, but Henry found the best possible home for him with his own daughter. Renamed TV Ted, he's now getting all the hooks he could hope for. We've had a great day here in Cumbria. There's been lots of action, lots of haggling, lots of buying and selling. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.